Here we are back again in the Forerunner today. I'm kind of starting to get used to this setup, but not going to lie to you. Not nearly as comfortable as my recording studio at home, but you know, we got to make do with what we have, right? I have been telling you guys for years now, the mainstream media in this country is allergic to the truth. Not only are they allergic to the truth, they pretend to be obsessed with words. They pretend to be offended. They pretend to be outraged over simple statements, simple words. Since 2015, the mainstream media has done everything in their power to destroy Donald Trump. Orange man, bad. Three years ago in 2020, they were successful with it. They had a two-part strategy at the time. They exploited the Fauci fungus while hiding away John Biden in some remote trailer, making sure that he never spoke in public. Well, in the case of John Biden, they made sure he never attempted to speak in public. Forming sentences, forming paragraphs seems to be a daunting challenge for our fearless leader. Over the past 12 months, though, the media, they have utilized multiple strategies to destroy the perception of Donald Trump. They've had him arrested. They've had him publicly tried in court. They have invented all kinds of myths and fantasies, but nothing is working this time around. They even tried to be cool with normal people by befriending a Republican candidate. Problem is... They chose the wrong candidate. The media is pretending to fall in love with Nick Haley, not realizing that normal people think Nick Haley is a disease. The only thing worse than endorsing Nikki Haley would be endorsing Lindsey Graham, the man who has spent the past few decades hiding the worst kept secret in Washington. It's cool, Lindsey, it's cool. There is no sense in hiding it any longer. We all know you prefer the cucumber over the peach. It's okay, nobody cares. But since all their strategies to derail the momentum of Donald Trump have ended a huge embarrassing failure, the shit fucks in the mainstream media, they have come up with a new method. This plan is brilliant! We will finally peel the orange! What is this new plan? What is this new strategy? <laughs> Taking small segments of Donald Trump's speeches and using his words to compare him to Hitler. <laughs> you know, this is so ironic. The same media that refuses to cover anti-Israeli protest, the same media that refuses to support Israel, it is the same media that's trying to accuse Donald Trump of being anti-Semitic. And have you ever noticed the media is constantly trying to create a new enemy, and it's never the right enemy that they create. They never go after our real enemies. China, drug cartels, human traffickers, Lucifer, also known as the object of Joy Reid's devotion. Instead, they treat us like we're children and create fake monsters in the closet. First it was Donald Trump, then it was Ron DeSantis, then it was Vivek Ramaswamy, and now we've come full circle back to Donald Trump. None of these dudes worry me. None of them concern me. Hell, I'm not even worried about a doofus like Nick Haley. You want to know who our real enemy is? You want to know the biggest threat to freedom in this country? America's number one enemy? It's not China, or as the Trumper would call it, Gina. When he pronounces it sometimes, I think he's forgetting the VA at the beginning. Right now, though, the number one enemy to normal people in America are the shit fucks in the mainstream media. Once again, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I never buy into the hype surrounding presidential elections. Every election cycle, all we hear is, this is the most consequential election in our nation's history. And, you know, both sides are guilty of doing this. I like Glenn Beck, have a lot of respect for Glenn Beck, but every election... Glenn Beck pretends like it's the most important election in the history of America. Um, of course it is. Until the next one. There are so many important issues, though, in this election cycle. The two candidates, they literally represent two different versions of America. On one side, you have a strong economy, low inflation, minimal threats of war, because other nations believe this dude is crazy enough to turn their major cities into parking lots. On one side, you have an abundance of strength. And then you have the other side. You have a fossil that should be running for president of the nursing home. This man can't ride a Schwinn. He thinks the moon is a UFO filled with aliens coming to take the virginity of the Star Trek virgin Mike Freeman. Last month, he was claiming, John Biden, he was claiming that Thanksgiving was one of the cheapest on record for American families. You know, in a rare instance of clarity, 
John Biden was actually right here. Thanksgiving? It was very cheap this year. Most families were able to save a lot of money. They couldn't afford the turkey. They couldn't afford to travel. Many were in withdrawal because of shortages in the pharmaceutical industry. Something that should never happen, but it tends to happen often when you outsource your drugs to foreign countries. So yeah, yeah. Thanks to Johnny B. Biden, Thanksgiving was one of the cheapest on record this year. For many families, it was also the most miserable. But Lee Doofus at CNN, Jake the Bongo Tapper, he's not worried about families being unable to celebrate holidays. He's not worried about a gallon of milk costing as much as a pint of whiskey. Jake the Bongo Tapper, he is not worried about you being unable to afford airfare to travel home to see your family for Christmas. No, 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 no! According to the Bongo Tapper, there is a far greater threat facing this country. This man needs to be silenced. Sunday, while all of us were watching the NFL, Jake Tapper, he was busy going off on an, another unhinged rant. The Bongo Tapper, he is extremely worried about the words of Donald Trump. This is your greatest threat. This should keep you up at night. The simple words coming from the orange man. Watch for yourself. The dehumanizing rhetoric of Adolf Hitler is once again alive and well on a national political stage. This time, of course, in the United States. This time given life by former president and current Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump, whose thoughts on immigrants were made shockingly crystal clear over the weekend. They're poisoning the blood of our country. That's what they've done. They poison mental institutions and prisons all over the world, not just in South America, not just the three or four countries that we think about, but all over the world they're coming into our country from Africa, from Asia, all over the world. They're pouring into our country. Nobody's even looking at them. They just come in. Uh, the crime is going to be tremendous. South America, Africa, Asia. No mention of Europe in Mr. Trump's list. And he uses the term poisoning the blood of our country, poisoning the blood of our country. If you were to open up a copy of Hitler's Mein Kampf, you would find the Nazi leader describing the mixing of non-Germans with Germans as poisoning. The Jew, Hitler wrote, quote, poisons the blood of others. This, according to Hitler, posed an existential threat to Germany because, quote, all great cultures of the past perished only because the originally creative race died out from blood poisoning, unquote. There's really no other way to say it. Donald Trump's language mirrors this directly. Really? Really? I'm supposed to be afraid of this? I'm supposed to be afraid of words? I'm supposed to be outraged because Donald Trump had the audacity to speak at a presidential rally? At least the Trumper has the ability to speak coherently. In three years under the leadership of John Biden, I have yet to see Johnny B. Biden put together a coherent thought. First of all, Jake the Bongo Tapper. He's pretending to be outraged because Donald Trump mentioned other countries sending us their criminals. He mentioned Africa. He mentioned Asia. Oh, I feel so bad for those victims of mythical racism in those countries. Stop Asian hate. Stop African hate. Um, Jack, those are continents, not countries. Who cares, you uneducated plebe? Did you notice that Trump didn't mention the country of Europe? Uh, yeah, I did notice that. I also noticed that Trump didn't mention Australia. He didn't mention Canada either. Why? Because they're not giving us a problem. And let's get to this false notion that Trump is using the words of Adolf. He said poisoning the blood of our country. Adolf said the same thing about the Jews. Trump is anti-Semitic. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought Trump was guilty of mythical racism. According to the media, Trump is supposedly against black people, even though black people were thriving in the Trump economy. Unemployment amongst African-American youth, lowest in decades. I also remember the mainstream media accusing the Trumper of mythical misogyny. According to the media, Trump hates everyone except orange people. I highly, highly doubt that Donald Trump has ever read Mein Kampf. Matter of fact, 
I would be willing to bet Jake the Bongo Tapper, he's never read it either. But just because Trump used similar terminology, it doesn't mean that he is ushering in the Fourth Reich. And I bet Jake Tapper doesn't know what that means either. But anyway, Adolf, he also happened to love animals, loved his dogs. I love my dogs. Does that mean I'm the next dictator? Allegedly, Adolf, he had an affinity for the dope. He allegedly liked his opiates. Does that mean Needle Ned under the bridge downtown is the next Chancellor of Germany? This is why CNN doesn't draw ratings. This is the reason no one watches CNN. This network calls Jake Tapper a journalist. That's like ESPN calling Mina Kimes an NFL analyst. Jake Tapper, he's a professional at two things, and it ain't journalism. Number one, he's a paid propagandist. And number two, Jacob, he is one of the best when it comes to tapping the bongo. Believe it or not, the lead with Jack Tapper, it is the second most watched show at CNN. Woohoo! Yes, yes, yes. Now, of course, that's no accomplishment. You know what the most watched show at CNN was last week? Something called Fareed or Farouk Zakaria GPS. It's a travel show, I think. Farouk helps marginalized groups in foreign countries who lack modern technology. And he uses his GPS to help them with directions to our southern border. Last week, he helped 750,000 people find their way to America. Normal people call it illegal immigration. CNN, they call it future voters. In the past 12 months, Jake Tapper, he has lost 150,000 viewers. When you look at the ratings chart at CNN, it looks like the balance sheet of the WNBA. Nothing but red, nothing but losses. For decades, CNN called itself the most trusted name in news. But have you guys noticed they don't use that slogan much anymore? They can no longer say that because no one, I mean no one trusts CNN. They will never appeal to normal people, and they're not woke enough for parishioners of Woke United Methodist. If you're looking for mythical racism, why watch Jake Tapper when you can watch Joy Reid? If you're looking for positive coverage of John Biden, why watch Wolf Blitzer? Woof, woof, woof. Why watch an unintimidating wolf when you can watch Joe and Mika Scarborough? I want to be a lover. This network is an absolute disaster. Like I've told you guys many times before, biggest problem at CNN, they don't have an identity. Who is their target audience? Who is CNN trying to appeal to? The best way for CNN to survive, appeal to normal people. Right now, there is not a cable news network that is targeting normal people. Well, Casey, what about News Nation? Um, News Nation? The same dump that built their primetime lineup around Chris Cuomo? Hey, it's me, Chrissy C. News Nation will never be taken seriously, but I will give them credit for something. News Nation, they did have the best Republican debate, and it wasn't even close. Every other debate was a disaster. But anyway, CNN doesn't have an identity, which is a sign that they don't have leadership. They don't have star power. You know what else CNN doesn't have? They don't have an audience. But give me your thoughts on this. Jake Tapper goes on another unhinged rant, faking outrage over the words of Donald Trump. At this point, the strategy has become clear. They are going with the false notion that Trump is inspired by Adolf. Seems like laziness to me, a complete lack of creativity from the media. They're running out of ideas. They're running out of ways to attack the Trumper. Does anyone take Jake Tapper seriously? Does anyone take CNN seriously as a news organization? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate you guys and your continued support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.